welcome to JG3 Reviews. My name is James and I do fountain pen reviews and related things. And today I have the Mahjong A1. Now, for some of you, this is already a very familiar pen. It is a 90%, I'm going to say 90% clone, 10% inspired by, that might be a little bit generous, version of the Pilot Capless Vanishing Point pen, depending on your market and where you buy this from. Uh, this is, as you know, this is one of my favorite fountain pens for everyday carry. I just really enjoy using this pen. It's a great pen. And this is the Mahjong version of the pen. And uh, it does bring, I will say this, it does bring some things to the table. And that's why I say 10% inspired by. It is, it is so close to this pen that you can actually, well, why don't we flip the camera and see? Well, the box doesn't leave a whole lot to the imagination. This is actually not the standard box for the Majan A1. Uh, they were out of stock or had not yet gotten the new boxes in stock. When I ordered mine, and so they contacted me, the seller did, and said, hey, you know, do you mind if we send it to you in another box or we can wait a couple of weeks and send it to you in the uh, correct box? And I said, you know, box is a box. Send it on. So you may get yours in a different box from pictures I've seen. Probably a little bit nicer box than this, but this is this is what I got and it's fine. It all arrived in good shape and everything else well, well protected. As you can see, the reason for the change in boxes and everything else is branding because Moon Man became uh, Majan. This is still a, a Moon Man leftover box. It does come with a little instruction pamphlet, which is always uh, good if you're new to fountain pens and you want to know how do you ink it, how do you clean it, then uh, this will give you that information. Then this pen comes with some extras that you might not expect. It comes with this converter because this uses pilot style proprietary cartridges. Yes, it does not even use a normal Majan cartridge. And it includes an eyedropper so that you can fill this using that method and especially so that you can refill this extra pilot style uh, empty cartridge, which also comes with a stopper. That's actually, that's kind of handy. I don't know that I really need that, uh, but I, I like that they included it, but that isn't even all, as we'll see in just a second. You can tell this box was made for something else, and honestly, the shape of the cutout makes me curious just exactly what that, what that might have been. Anyway, here is the star of the show for today, which is in a really nice matte black finish. I really like the finish on this pen. Let's look at some of the, the details. First is, of course, when you talk about this pen or the vanishing point, you're going to talk about that clip, and it's pretty much the same. A little bit more of a pinch right here where you have uh, the indentations that make this easier to grip, and there's just a pinch in that metal that's a bit different. I can show you the the other by comparison. Just a little bit different there. Nothing Nothing. They didn't stray too far from that, but very, very similar. Uh, stiff but usable clip, as you would expect. You have a glossy trim ring with these little details made to look a little bit more uh, industrial, I suppose. It's nice. I like the glossy finish on that, and it, it breaks that mat up just a little bit. They have the Moon Man name on the back of the pen, which tells you when this was manufactured. And it, like I say, uh, they've already changed over the instruction booklet, but not the pen. And so this is just right at the time of all of that going on with the lawsuit with Caveco and everything else and the trademarking by Caveco of the Moon Man name. Anyway, uh, that is there, and so that makes this interesting to me a little bit because it probably is among the last model to be introduced with that name and uh, <laughs> kind of copies uh, some of the issues that got them in that trouble to begin with. It's kind of a shame. Let me just do a little tangent here for a second and just deal with this. It really is a shame that Moon Man continues to just copy so closely because they clearly are talented pen makers. And I sure would love to see them just branch out into complete creativity of their own because they've got the skill. Uh, they could do that. And I, I, would, I think it'd be awesome to see what they would do if they would set them free from the tether of, of 
looking like other people's pens and just go out there and make their own. I, that's, that's my challenge to Majan is be creative. You've got the talent. Get after it. Anyway, let's let's move on from that because there are, are whole, I think there may be whole reams of, of uh, digital paper given to that whole argument, and I don't intend to add to it today. I've, I've been there and done that. Anywho, as you look at the pen, you have those details. Then you get to the knock, which itself is also matte. And I've used this pen quite a bit. I'm not seeing any premature wear on the finish, I always wonder how uh, the anodizing or whatever process they use, how that will last, and uh, that's still an open question. But you will notice, did you listen? It has a nice, smooth mechanism. I'm going to be quiet. It works well. It's nothing like that Lanbato copy of this pen back here. It is a high quality mechanism from the sound of it. Here is the other by comparison, the Pilot, the original. Now you can you can hear a little bit more refinement there. Let's try it. Oh, <laughs> if you press on the wrong end of the pen, let's try it. Slightly louder. Okay, I'm not going to do that all day long, but just slightly louder, but uh, just nearly, maybe not quite, but nearly as smooth as the Pilot in at least the one that I have. Uh, that That's impressive. It is, it's not gritty like that Lambito was at all. All, nothing about this pen uh, should be put in the same category as that Lambito, except for creativity issues. Now let's open this pen up, and I'll show you something else interesting about the pen. When you open it up, you have, of course, the same metal protector for the cartridge, and that keeps that cartridge from uh, wearing out prematurely and causing leaks and things like that and call it, allows the mechanism to work as it should. And you will notice that this has that same guide point into the mechanism so that it will come out as it should. And it has the same sort of trap door. I mean, it's the same. It is the same in the way that that works. So, and, and I've had no dry out issues. It functions so far as well as my personal pilot capitalist has performed. I'm, I haven't had a dry out from either pen. So, it does work. Uh, you will take that off, and what you will find is that if you take your, your capless or your vanishing point and take this out, that, yes, indeed, you can put the Mahjan nib unit into this pen, and it will work just as it should. No issues. They both work uh, in the other pen. And that is because they really are that similar. You see? Same same unit, basically. Uh, nothing original here. And of course, that's, that's a problem. I get it. But that's... I'm just giving you the facts on this part. So, uh, this, as you can see, uh, better finished on the Pilot. And so that's why there is just that little bit of extra smoothness because, you know, Pilot does things pilot in pilot ways. And uh, the Majan is quite well done, but you can see that there, there's going to be some difference in, in the way that it works just because of the difference in uh, polish and, and finish and things like that. So anyway, it, it all interchanges. This does have a cartridge. I refilled this because it comes with, am I looking at the right pen? Yes. Uh, because it comes with two of those plastic cartridges. This one was already in the nib unit. The other one is in that bag. And so I filled this up and uh, it's it's been working flawlessly so far. And while I've got this apart, just in case you're not familiar with either of these pens, let me show you how it goes back together. It's really quite simple. Uh, to fill the pen, obviously you would refill that cartridge. I've just shown you, you would, you would remove this, remove the cartridge, and you can refill that with the eyedropper uh, or a syringe. I, I used a syringe. Or you can use a pilot cartridge, or you can use that converter. Now, I have not, full disclosure, I have not used the converter that came with the A1. I've only used the refillable cartridge. It looks like, you know, an okay converter. It doesn't look like anything special. It's just very basic. And so I've just been going with 
the cartridge. So uh, the pen has good heft, similar to, we'll put it on the scale here in a second, similar to the Pilot. You put the nib unit in and you want to make sure this is all aligned so that that goes right, notch goes right into the groove as it should. And then you put on the, I'm just going to do this uh, just to show you, you put on the other end of the barrel, which of course this looks terrible, but again, this tells you something, okay? This tells you something. But you, whoa, don't do, don't do that and just let it spring like that, okay? And then that screws back on. It really is that simple. I've, I've heard some people talk about uh, the pilot as if it's difficult to clean or difficult to fill. I, I don't think so. I think those are pretty simple steps and it all works. Very reliable pins. Uh, the pilot capless is, and I suspect that this is going to be in the long term as well. If it, if for some reason I have trouble with it, I always come back and put that in the description and, and tag a comment to let you know that. But, uh, so far I expect that the, uh, the unfortunate copying has brought the fortunate result of it being a pretty reliable pen because they actually manufactured it pretty well as well. Now, let's do a, a quick comparison on the scale of these two pens. All right, let's start with the Pilot, since it's the standard, and that is 32 grams. And then the Majan A1, and that is 35 grams. So there is a little bit of material difference. Both these pens are inked. Both have about the same amount of ink in them, I believe. So, so while I give you the rest of those dimensions, let's take a look at that nib. It writes, I would say, more like a Western fine. It, I'll compare it to the capless medium here in just a minute. But it is just a, a pilot vanishing point capless style steel, steel nib, whereas most vanishing points come with a gold nib. Now this is the special alloy, it's a little less expensive, so basically, basically I'm going to call that a steel nib, uh, an alloy nib. That actually probably is a good pen to compare to this one then. Quick size comparison of the pen, so you know that it's identical to the size of a Pilot Capless. Many of you have a Lamy Safari, and that gives you a reference there. Let's go into some, some clickable, shall we? So this is the very quiet click. Drives my daughter nuts. She wants something with a more commanding click in her pens. Uh, but that is the uh, Karan Deosh 888 or Infinity. I like that pen, by the way. And uh, so if you think that I'm just down on the company because of my review of the 849, it's not true. This is one of my favorite ballpoint pens in my collection of pens. This is the Uniball Signo 207. Great pen, very similar in size, but of course much lighter. And then for those of you who work for the United States government, a pen that you are very familiar with, also available by the way on Amazon, is the Skillcraft Ballpoint Pen. And of course that probably is for a lot of people the Touchstone Sound of a clickable pen. Probably 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 triggered desires for retirement right there, didn't I? For some people. There you go. That gives you a quick size reference. All right, let's see how the pen writes. The Majan A1. This is a fine nib. And this is steel, just so you remember. And the ink today is from Birmingham Pen Company. And it is this petroleum. You notice that's a big 60 milliliter bottle. Really great ink. Really like that. And uh, it suits this pen, I think, quite well, both in the color. Of course, it's a black pen, so you can use whatever you want. But uh, I don't know. There's just something about it that called to me. And... I'm always looking for a good excuse to try this ink in a pen. And some pens, it's just a little bit too wet and uh, not that paper friendly. But in this pen, it really, it does well. It kind of brings out the best of both. Witness. 
you'll notice that that actually seems quite dry. And I think that's why this ink does so well in this pen, because it's not like that in some of my other pens. Uh, it, it can be a, a gusher ink, but uh, that may tell me that this, this would actually be a fairly dry pen, but I don't know. It has great flow and everything else in this one, so I like it. This is Rhodia paper, and you notice that that just writes very nice and smooth. Let me just take a second to stop and compare to the, uh, the Pilot. Much finer line, you'll notice. That's a Roshizuku Konpeki, and uh, mine's technically a capitalist, but I'm just going to call it a vanishing point for the second because, you know, marketing is all the difference in the world, and... You can see that this medium is actually slightly finer, but they, they compare well. So if, if you've got a vanishing point in medium, then that kind of gives you an idea of what this fine writes like. Let's do our, our little quick squiggle test uh, just to show you how well it, it does or does not keep up. Very, very well. Very well. Uh, this only little spot, that was me. I turned. I felt it. You saw it. Uh, very well. Look at that. There's no, of course, you're not going to get uh, line variation. Let me just do this again. See? Uh, very even, crisp line, but very good. And I do. Let me just do a little shout out to the ink. I really do like the way that this ink uh, comes out of this particular nib. Okay, let's do some pros and cons. You notice I got a new sheet of paper out? One big pro, if you hit the button to record, it will work better than if you don't. Uh, first is the build quality. I have to say, uh, the first thing I noticed getting this pen out, looking it over is that uh, they've done it again. They've made a great pen. They didn't invent a pen, but they, they've made, they've produced a great pen. And that brings me to the second thing, which is it really does write well. It's a writer, okay? You, you may have wondered about that, thinking, you know, is this going to be a cruddy, a cruddy nib? Uh, can, they, can they pull it off? Well, yeah, they did. They pulled that off too. And another thing, accessories. So one of the things that surprised me when I opened the box was not that there was a converter. They usually include a converter, but that there were two empty proprietary cartridges. Empty, maybe in some markets they're not empty, but a lot of times they will not send ink with their pens uh, from China to the U.S. That's just a, you know, a safety thing. So empty cartridges and an eyedropper and a stopper for the cartridge just in case you want to swap out colors and inks before you've used them up. I, I just like that. It's just a nice touch. I I will say this too. Uh, I think that offering the clipless version, even though I don't have it and I don't know that I'll get it, I'm interested, but I don't really need another of these pens. Offering the clipless version that was pretty smart. There are a lot of people that the only reason they don't like the capless or the vanishing point is the clip, the ergonomics of writing with that clip there. It doesn't bother me. I, I don't mind that at all. And especially since both of them had this little pinched area, uh, it works for me. And actually the clip helps guide me to keep that nib from rolling around too much because, you know, that happens from time to time. Then cons. So the big con for me is, I think you know this, wow, bad L there, is the lack of originality right? Because that's that's really the whole issue with the pen to begin with, is that it's just not very original. And by not very, I mean it's just not, okay? So that is the big one. Uh, any other, honestly, I, ah, let me think. The other would be something else that it shares, in common, and that's that form factor. For some people, not for me, but for some people, uh, they're just never going to be comfortable writing with that pen. So again, you got the clipless option, but I just think I ought to, I ought to put that there. That is 
a con for a lot of people. Another pro, and I guess it's 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 the number one thing for some, is going to be the value. It really is a good deal. Okay, so so there is that. Overall, just objectively speaking, do I like the pen? Yes. I do. There are always the caveats that come with it, but I do like this pen. I very much like the Pilot Capless. And given that I've re reviewed this before, you can check out that video. I got a really good deal on mine, and, and and I would go with the Pilot if I were faced with the same deal. This is the alloy, so they really do compare back to back against the steel nib. Yeah, I, I'm still going to buy the Pilot capless over that, in part because they're the ones who invented the pen. Do I like the variations in this? Yes. Would I like to see more variation? That's the thing. I want to see more creativity and more variation, not just a different trim band, because that's that's about all it comes down to, isn't it? Okay. Well, God bless you. Have a great week. I hope you stay well. I know those numbers are up at the time of this recording for that disease, which we will not name here today on the channel. And where I live, uh, you may hear it in my voice. We've got a bunch of mountain cedar and juniper pollen flying around in the air, and it is wreaking havoc on all of us. It's just something. But God bless you. Have a great week, and I'll see you in the comments in the next room.